From the moment it was built, the Rolling Thunder was a massive attraction. It was the ultimate ride for thrill seekers. But everything changed on August 16, 1981. On this day, a young employee lost his life in a terrible accident. The investigation that followed was bone chilling and it raised questions about the safety of the ride. Come and explore the history and the mystery of the Rolling Thunder and find out what really happened on that fateful day. Starting off, did you know that The Great Adventure had a big upgrade in 1977 when Six Flags took over? It was like a thrill seeker's paradise. They wasted no time adding some of the most heart pumping rides around. But they didn't stop there. Oh no, they went all out with a massive wooden coaster that would change the game. Rolling Thunder was the name, and it was unlike anything the park had seen before. It was a beast of a coaster, with not one, but two tracks. Imagine racing through the air, feeling the wind whip past you, and watching the other train zooming alongside you. It was a thrill beyond words. But let me tell you, building the coaster was no small feat. They brought in an army of carpenters and piles upon piles of lumber. It was a sight to behold and a testament to the power of human ingenuity. Crafting those rails was one of the toughest parts of the job. The curves had to be just right to keep the coaster moving smoothly and it took real skill to make it happen. And here's the crazy thing. The coaster was built with skid brakes. That means that the brake pads had to stay dry or the coaster cars could slide right through the station. Can you imagine the kind of adrenaline rush that would give you? And that's not even half of it. The coaster was designed for four trains, but if it rained, they had to take two off the tracks to avoid any collisions. That's how intense this ride was. It could only handle the most perfect conditions. Still, the trains would often overshoot upon their return. This shows how the roller coaster was somewhat dangerous from the very start. But you know what? Despite all the challenges, Rolling Thunder was an instant hit. The Rolling Thunder had another really cool thing about it, the sign. It was super fancy with lights and sounds that totally matched the ride's name. Picture this, dark gray storm clouds in the background. And then this awesome 3D logo with twin lightning bolts that would light up starting at the top of the sign and go all the way to the logo at the front and center. It was definitely a sight to see. Rolling Thunder opened to much fanfare with long lines of guests waiting to ride the exciting new coaster. At the time, it was considered huge and the idea of the dueling and racing aspect made the ride even more exciting. Rolling Thunder was also the fastest ride in the park and remained so for 10 years. And at a ride time of over 2 minutes, it was also the longest coaster in the park. Picture it. A dual track racing wooden roller coaster that towered 96 feet in the air. Think about it. The wind in your hair. The rush of adrenaline coursing through your veins as you soar down the tracks at speeds of up to 56 miles per hour. The coaster was an impressive feat of engineering stretching over 3,300 feet long and built with over 60 miles of Douglas fir lumber. For thrill seekers, Rolling Thunder was the ultimate ride, a true classic of the amusement park world. As you hurtled along the tracks, you couldn't help but feel a sense of awe and wonder at the sheer scale of the coaster. And for those who rode it, the memories would last a lifetime. It saw years of success until the 16th of August, 1981. The sunny skies over the theme park had never looked more promising than that day. Little did anyone know that the warmth of the sun would soon turn into a chilling tragedy. It was a typical summer day and the park was bustling with excitement. People were laughing and having fun, eager to ride the famous Rolling Thunder roller coaster. The coaster had been around for years and had seen millions of safe rides. But on this fateful day, everything changed. It was just a routine test run, nothing out of the ordinary. The ride operators had done it countless of times before. The coaster train started to climb the tracks and the anticipation of the passengers grew. But then, something went horribly wrong. Suddenly, a young park employee, Scott Tyler of Middletown, New Jersey, fell from the coaster to his death. The news spread like wildfire and people were shocked and saddened. How could this have happened? An investigation was launched by the New Jersey Labor Department, 
and what they concluded was chilling yet typical. The investigation reported, according to employees and other eyewitness accounts, all safety equipment was in place when the ride began, and the investigation so far indicates that Tyler may have assumed an unauthorized riding position that did not make use of the safety feature of the restraining devices. It was a mistake that would cost him his life. The tragedy rocked the park to its core and everyone was on edge. But the question remained, was the ride to blame? The ride was inspected and the Labor Department concluded that it was operationally and mechanically sound. Despite the reassurances, people still felt uneasy. According to an official report by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, the victim, Scott Tyler, was a veteran employee who had worked at the park for several summers. What was supposed to be a routine test ride of the Rolling Thunder roller coaster turned into a nightmare when Tyler fell to his death. The details of the incident are bone chilling. As the roller coaster train reached high speeds, Tyler climbed out of the lap bar, holding on for dear life. But his grip was no match for the force of the ride, and he was tragically thrown off. An autopsy revealed that the victim had died of a fractured skull and multiple injuries. Can you even imagine the horror of witnessing such a terrifying event? The park officials estimated that the roller coaster car was traveling at a mind-boggling 35 miles per hour at the time of the accident. It's a sobering reminder of the dangers that lurk in seemingly harmless amusement park rides. The next time you strap into a roller coaster, remember the tragic fate of Mr. Tyler and always follow the safety guidelines. Because, as we have learned, even the smallest lapse in judgment can have fatal consequences. As the days passed, the park slowly started to return to normal. But the memory of that tragic day lingered. The park employees were reminded to always follow the safety procedures. And the guests were more cautious now when riding the coasters. The incident had been a wake-up call, a reminder that even the most thrilling rides can be dangerous if not respected. And so, the Rolling Thunder continued to thrill and excite, but with a newfound sense of respect and caution. The mighty Rolling Thunder was one of Six Flags' most legendary attractions, and it held court in the Frontier Adventure section from 1979 to 2013. But like all good things, the Rolling Thunder eventually came to an end. In 2013, the coaster was retired, leaving behind a legacy that will never be forgotten. It was permanently closed to make room for Zumanjaro, the Drop of Doom, which opened in 2014. For fans of Six Flags' great adventure, the loss of the Rolling Thunder was a bitter pill to swallow. A reminder that even the most beloved attractions must eventually make way for new experiences. Still, the memory of the mighty coaster lives on, a testament to the power of human ingenuity and the unbridled thrill of a great amusement park ride. So the next time you're at Six Flags Great Adventure, take a moment to reflect on the legacy of the Rolling Thunder. Do you think it was the victim's fault? Or was there a problem with the Rolling Thunder? Let us know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to the channel to hear about more roller coaster tragedies. Stay safe for now, and we'll see you in the next one.